We're back again for our third stage in this painting of Prague. At this stage, <clears throat> the painting has dried for the most part, the bridge is dry, and we can work into it uh, with some richer darks. In this case, I'm using a neutral tint with a small brush, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna mixed with that neutral tint and painting one of the darker elements in the painting, which is the underside of the Charles Bridge. I'm trying to keep it feeling loose. In other words, I know these are important strokes, they're definitive strokes, but I'm keeping them kind of sketchy. I'm not refining them too much. I feel that keeps true to the rest of the painting. Uh, now you see me going up above, and I'm painting some of the eaves on the buildings, giving ones, certain ones, a little more clarity, uh, helping to give, give a little focus back there, especially where the wash is rather flat. Uh, you see where I'm applying windows and eaves, it kind of livens up that area, makes it look more like buildings. And that was something that I was counting on from the beginning. That's why I was content to paint all those buildings as one big shape. Uh, I had in the back of my mind that I would divide them into more recognizable buildings with windows and decorative elements on the roof, etc. Well, here's another distinctive feature of the Charles Bridge, which are these statues. The statues um, are quite big on the Charles Bridge. They're um, martyrs to the city. Um, most of them have some religious uh, bearing, but quite inspiring when you walk down the bridge and you see on all sides of you beautiful sculptures and beautiful ironwork, beautiful masonry. It's Prague's treasure, and it's um, there for everyone. We're seeing it at a distance, so naturally these things are smaller, less impactful. The more uh, dramatic part of Prague from a distance are the spires, the rooftops. And that's been a major source of enjoyment for this painting. That's, <clears throat> if I were to point out one element where I've focused on rhythm and rep uh, repeating shapes, it's in the rooftops. And... Uh, that was quite a, quite a beauty to me, quite a beautiful experience to see those rooftops over the bridge. Now we're painting the reflections. The reflections are a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue with a little bit of yellow ochre. And on top of uh, the blue water they give uh, that gray is even cooler. And yes, I'm thinking to reflect the towers, the bridge, but um, maybe an overriding thought is to make the water itself darker by means of reflections, closer to in value to that of the uh, city above. The reason being, my focus is, uh, or my center of interest, or my reason for painting this is in the sky. I want that dramatic sky to read first and, and kind of grab you, so... I have to uh, somehow merge uh, the water with the darker part of the painting, the bridge and the city. And that's what's guiding my choices for color and for tone. You notice I'm using uh, strong brush strokes, linear brush strokes, some are angled, leaving some of that original blue to come through. This is in keeping with the sort of uh, brush strokes that I'm using throughout the painting. It would be really easy to get caught up in creating ripples and uh, exacting reflections. And I feel that would detract from the, the painting itself, the overall, the big view, the big picture. So I'm being, being conscious of using the same sort of brushwork in the foreground here that I use throughout the painting. A loose, loose application 
and um, so far it's working out pretty well. This area is still wet and you can see that I'm not leaving the area. I'm continuing to darken some parts. I return to the bridge and, and pull some of that color down into the water to make them mesh a little better. I uh, will add some green under the foliage to reflect the color of the green that's above. And I'll add, um, you know, a few more ripples to the foreground, uh, some more darks to the to the area under the bridge. And one thing that's kind of grabbing my attention that I feel I have to deal with is the two openings on the right hand side. They they're really pulling my eye in that direction and that's not really what I want. I'm going to have to add a little bit of color back there, uh, give a little definition to the shore and then add some blue and and resolve that area. Uh, looking at the painting I hope you um, can understand what I'm meaning by rhythm in painting. Repeated shapes, repeated lines, when looking at a landscape, this is one of the things that I am asking myself, or what are the repeated lines, what are the repeated shapes, how do they create uh, the mood in the painting, or the feeling in the painting. And that's what I've been trying to evoke in this painting, is a feeling of the beautiful shapes of frog against the passing rain in the sky.